Hi, Chris with RC Worst here. Today, we're going to be talking about diaphragm pressure tanks, including why they're a necessary component for a pressurized water pumping system, as well as discuss how they operate and the importance of selecting quality components within your water system. Now, you may be asking yourself, why do I need a pressure tank? Well, I'll answer that with four reasons that you need a pressure tank in your water system. One, protect and extend the life of the pump by reducing the number of cycles. The pump is most often the most expensive component in a private water system. By reducing the number of times that it cycles, you will reduce the amount of stress on the electrical components in the system. Number two is to provide storage of water under pressure for delivery between cycles. Without a pressure tank, the pump would have to cycle every time a valve was opened downstream. This would add an incredible amount of wear to the pump and motor. Number three is to have a reserve capacity available for periods of peak demand or in the instance of a power outage. Think about how much water is used to water the lawn, take a shower, run the dishwasher, or even flush a toilet. It's quite a bit when you add it all up. Without some type of storage device, your water use is going to be limited to the amount of water the pump can produce, which is especially problematic if you have a low producing well or a large number of occupants with a high flow requirement. And finally, number four is to reduce system maintenance. Yes, that's right, reduce system maintenance, including ownership costs of a well system or pump system. And that's ultimately what everybody's looking for with a water system is lower costs and longer life. A quality water system that will require as little maintenance as possible and last as long as it possibly can. Now that you're completely convinced that you need a pressure tank, you may be wondering, well, how do they work? Great question. When void of water, the air in the tank will push the diaphragm to conform to the bottom of the tank. Now, just to give you an idea, we have a pressure tank on uh, the side of me here that has been cut out to showcase how it works. Now, the lower section of the tank is where the diaphragm is, and this weld here is essentially the line that marks the top of the diaphragm. As the pressure tank fills with water, this diaphragm expands upward, and uh, this area becomes full of water. And the area up here is full of air, and that air is pressurized typically two to three pounds below the pressure that your system turns on at. So in the instance that your system turns on at 40 PSI, or the pump turns on at 40 PSI and off at 60 PSI, you would want this tank pre-charged to about 38 PSI. The air pressure in the top of the tank then is used to push the water back out of the tank when the pump is not operating. So during a normal pump cycle, the pump will turn on as the pressure has fallen below the on pressure of the pressure setting, and it will build up pressure in the tank, filling it with water gradually until it reaches that shut off pressure. And this is known as the cycle. The pump turns off, and then once the drawdown capacity with this particular tank, you have about, this is a 20 gallon tank, and at a 40, 60 PSI pressure setting, this tank has about a five gallon drawdown. So with a five gallon per minute pump or five gallons of usage, this tank would be depleted and the pump would cycle again. Next, let's discuss the components associated with a pressure tank. Starting with the top, we have the welded air valve. This is similar to the air valve that you're gonna find on your car tire or bicycle tire, and it can be filled with the same type of air filling devices such as a hand pump or compressor. Some lesser tanks on the market come with a threaded air valve instead of a welded air valve. The downside to the threaded air valve is that you've got one more possibility of leakage with the system and ultimately can contribute to a failure of the system because if a pressure tank is not working properly then the pump can essentially just rapid cycle until it just gets worn out prematurely and in some cases that can happen in a very short period of time to ensure that this tank to ensure that your pressure tank is operating correctly 
be sure to routinely check the air pressure and make, it, make sure that it is set correctly in the tank. Now we have a separate video on checking the air pressure in your pressure tank. Check the description below for a link. This tank also features a high strength steel shell, which provides a strong support base for the system. Now you may have noticed at this point that there is quite a shine to this particular tank. The Wellex Troll brand utilize a glossy finish on these tanks, which makes them suitable for outdoor applications. Now, when we're talking about the components inside the tank, there are a few things to pay special attention to that make this tank superior to some other tanks on the market. First, with this tank, you have the diaphragm, which separates the air in the top of the in the top compartment of the tank from the bottom compartment of the tank, which is filled with water. This is an essential component of a diaphragm tank. It is essential that the diaphragm be constructed of a high quality material since it will have to withstand a great amount of pressure for its entire life. The Wellex Troll diaphragms are made of a thick butyl rubber. It's actually the thickest in the industry. Butyl is the best known elastomer to prevent air loss. This butyl diaphragm does not support bacterial growth and it is also featuring a seamless construction for added strength and flexibility. The diaphragm in this tank conforms exactly to the shell configuration without stretching, creasing, or forming bubbles. Additionally, there are no corners that could trap sediment or water. In the bottom of the tank, below the diaphragm, is a polypropylene liner. This liner is essential because without it, stored water would eventually corrode the steel and cause failure of the tank not to mention bits of metal and from the corrosion process getting into the faucet and plugging up your fixtures. Additionally, well control tanks feature a turbulator in the discharge elbow of the tank, which is located down here. The turbulator agitates water as it enters the tank, similar to a diffuser of sorts. It helps to reduce sediment buildup and extend the life of the tank by moving the water around a little bit more. So that's the basic components of a Wellex Troll tank. Now keep in mind that not every tank on the market will have the same high quality components as the one that we have here today. So if you're ever in question of a tank that you're considering purchasing or just have any questions on the Wellex Troll brand or anything related, check out our channel for, as a great resource or reach out to us by phone or email. Additionally, feel free to leave comments below. We do review those. I want to thank you for watching today, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. We'll catch you next time.